What's up, Fight Fam? It's uh, been a little while. Uh, just wanted to recap with a lot that has been going on lately. So for everyone that's been asking um, how I've been doing, thank you for everyone for reaching out. Uh, a lot has happened in the past three to four months since we did our last episode. And uh, if you've been listening to the most recent episodes, you would know that uh, my dad passed away in January, but on September 25th, um, not too long ago, a few weeks now, mom passed away. And I, I posted a whole uh, testimony about how the Lord kind of prepared my heart to go through that. Um, like, long story short, I had a prophetic dream of mom and dad being reunited about a week before she passed. So that was pretty cool. Um, and just to, I just wanted to give you guys an update and somehow give some encouragement because maybe you guys have gone through loss before. Um, I don't know if your parents are alive right now, but not to be a downer or anything, but it happens to everybody and eventually it will. I mean, I think it's a very normal thing for people to go through. So um, I dedicate this episode to everyone who's listening, who has gone through loss or in any shape, way or form. Uh, how to cope with it, how to deal with it, and to keep fighting the good fight of faith, right? Um, ever since then, I've been, um, I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately on myself about what are my actual goals. Because when when you experience your loved ones passing, it really makes you think, rethink everything, right? It makes you rethink your life, like your direction. What do you really want to do in this life? Like, are you just working a job? because it pays the bills, but you hate it and you're not happy? Or are you wanting to work towards something that's going to be amazing, you know, uh, regardless of uh, the financial situation, whatever? Is it worth pursuing? These are the kind of things that I've been thinking about. And I just want to encourage whoever's listening that in a way, life is short, you know, and time goes by really fast really quickly and I wouldn't want to waste any more time doing something that I'm not called to do you know I was listening to David Jeremiah on um, on the radio and he was talking about in his new series called forward is really good Dr. David Jeremiah is pretty thorough with his studies and I, I appreciate his work um, and he was saying that responsibility is our response to God's ability. Now, God can do anything, but how are you going to respond to what he's able to do in your life? That's our responsibility. And especially when it comes to our uniqueness, our character, our personality, our gifts and talents, what is your response to this given responsibility? And he said that, you know, whatever gift you have, be it podcasting or I don't know, painting, uh, talking to people, working, like we're all gifted at, in, in different levels, but whatever it is, God gave you that to bless people, period. Your, your gift is to uh, do it unto the Lord and to bless people unto the Lord. You know, like that sums it up. Like, and, and if it's your gift and if it's what you're made for, that's what's going to make you happy, right? And why am I saying this about when you lose your parents? Well, uh, that's what's been really um, getting me through everything. Not only the prophetic dreams of the Lord, like preparing my heart and like he gave me my son a prophetic dream after my dad passed that, um, you know, they usually play on Saturday mornings and late Friday night. My five-year-old son, <clears throat> at the time he was five, had a dream about my dad coming to play with him <laughs> in my son's dream for like two hours playing tag and all that just like they always did uh, according to schedule uh so that was really comforting um about my dream with mom and dad being reunited because they both know jesus and they knew um and i knew that they're reunited together in heaven um so these things give you comfort right but i've had another level of comfort like i've had supernatural peace um you know, it's kind of weird because a lot of people would be, you know, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, oh, you know, like 
which is given like I appreciate the love and support like a hundred percent but I'm I mean I'm mourning but I'm not depressed I uh it's 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 weird man I didn't uh you know like you can't really prepare for anything like this and you can't really I mean is I think it's very rare that you come to a point where your parents are begin to grow so old that you're like okay you know it's time for them to you know fall asleep one day and just wake up in heaven that's that's the dream i wish we all can live happy lives until we're 90 or 100 and then just go to sleep one day and wake up in heaven peacefully i wish everybody could pass like that but that's not realistic that's not the world we live in sometimes bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people is just what it is you know and uh, i don't blame god for that it's just I like to quote brother max holloway the blessed express it is what it is right and but i i don't see it as god's doing uh i posted something on instagram one day saying that god doesn't initiate everything but he can use anything he 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 doesn't initiate it all. He's not in complete control in every every aspect of your life, and not everything is God's will that's happening to you. Um, that's very dangerous, you know. Because if I had that frame of thinking, I would be thinking God took my mom. That's very toxic, you know. Um, John ten ten says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? Not Jesus, because Jesus said, "For I have come to give you life, and life more abundantly." So. You know, if you're saying God took your mom or your dad or, or your loved one, that's very toxic. Get it out of your life because you are not going to have a healthy relationship with anybody, really, um, if you have that kind of thinking. Uh, some some people want to point the blame as a coping process. Oh, um, and this is the dangerous part. If you consume yourself with the what ifs, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, like, oh, mom wouldn't have passed if I blank i should have came around more i should have been there. i mean like oh uh dad wouldn't have passed if i you know like don't do that that's that's sabotaging yourself self-sabotage 110 percent. you cannot consume your mind with oh you know um like you're finding blame like like you don't have to blame anybody you want a reason right i guess like you want some answers but that's where the faith and trust comes in you really got to trust the Lord is like, okay, God, we prayed for mom. We prayed for dad. They're together in heaven right now. Like maybe I'm dealing it. Uh, I'm probably dealing it uh, with it better than others would because I don't ask a lot of questions. That's just my personality. Like I just trust. Um, I trust the Lord and whatever he wants to do in this circumstance, I fully trust in him. And um, I ask questions, but um, I don't question everything. Like I, I, I roll with the punches. I, you know, I let everything roll off my back. Like just, I keep pushing forward. Whatever the circumstance is, financially, relationally, um, you know, whatever it may be. Whatever is brought my way, I roll with the punches and I keep pushing forward. That's my mechanism. That's my mentality, right? Some people deal with uh, things differently, obviously. But the point is, is that uh, stay away from the toxic theology that it's God's fault, you know. Um, I think that's just a coping or, or a, a cop-out, rather, uh, for... Uh, because we all could have done something better, right? But doing shoulda, coulda, wouldas does not help, right? There's always something like we could have prayed more. We could have done this. We could have done that. We could have like, I don't know, seen another doctor. Like, But that list is endless. Do not go there, okay? When you lose somebody that you love, do not go down that rabbit hole because it only ends in sabotage, depression, and you feeling like you didn't, good, didn't do well enough, okay? Don't do that because your loved ones wouldn't want you to do that. What your loved ones will want is for you to live your life to the fullest in remembrance of them. Honor them. Honor their name. Don't let everything they did for you go to waste. You know, my mother and father, they, they, 
led by example, and it's my duty as their son to continue on their legacy with love, with the, the love of the father, with, uh, with Aloha, like my mom was Miss Aloha, Miss Hollywood. She, uh, so beautiful, so bright, full of, um, such a glorious joy, you know, and my dad was a hard, hard worker. And that's something I could aspire to because, um, I work, but like the way that he was dedicated to his craft was amazing. And even coming home from work to get more things done around the house, fixing things around the house, like he was relentless. And, uh, and it could have, could have played into the downfall of, uh, you know, of his life, but at the end of the day, that's who he chose to be. And that's what, how he chose to live his life, you know? And, uh, and especially you men listening to this podcast, I'm just saying all this to encourage you, especially if you lost a loved one or you lost your parents or whatever, like we have to be strong as men and we have to acknowledge that we set the tone of our, um, of our marriage, you know, uh, most of the time, I think, in my opinion, and we set the tone, uh, almost all the time for our family, you know, like the, what do you, whatever you want to call it, the paternal uh, authority in the household or the, uh, the, the father figure leads the family and I'm choosing to worship. I'm choosing to have faith in God, no matter what I'm choosing to be positive about every, everything that I know that like, why would I be upset at the fact that my mom rather be with Jesus and my dad more than me? That's kind of selfish. Like, like the, that's the reality of it. Very brutally black and white, but that's the reality is like, I can't be selfish in the thought of, you know, I want mom here. Uh, cause I do feel that way, but not in a toxic consuming way of thinking that over and over again. You know, I feel like a part of her maybe wanted to be with dad, maybe preferred to be with Jesus in heaven. Cause, uh, she was going through a lot of pain and suffering and medical issues here without dad, you know? So, um, I'm, and I'm just probably random rambling, but this is my thought process of another word of advice, have a counselor or someone to talk to, uh, not just a buddy, but someone that is, that is a mentor figure, a pastor, a counselor, a therapist, somebody, you can't just isolation is the beginning of death. You know, like it's, you weren't created for isolation. Like we need accountability. We need to bounce ideas off of other people. We need to communicate. We need to break bread with others. We need to go meet with people. Like that's what I've been doing is just like taking care of business when I need to take care of with my family. And also when I have the time, grab a lunch with somebody, meet with your pastor, like appreciate the relationships that are available to you. You know, like don't take them for granted. And that's another thing once you... Uh, lose a parent or you lose both your parents like nothing is taken for granted like not the money I have not the 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 line of work you're in the kids you have like don't take anything for granted because everything is a blessing man like everything is beautiful like and but we just get so caught up in the hustle and tussle of everything of work school bills kids you know soccer practice that you know, whatever mumbo jumbo that life may throw you away but at the end of the day we got to be thankful for it man because it's beautiful it's it's worship like it's how you respond to what god is doing in your life and god didn't do this to me but he's doing something in it like he god is doing something in my family god is doing something in my marriage like it's not over it's, it may be the end of a chapter, but your story's just begun, man. Like, like, do not let this be your downfall, please. Because that's a, I know that's the last thing your parents would want. I know, like we were talking about, uh, with some friends about how you like, say for example, when, when, when you have a loved one that passes like a father or a mother, in my case, both, I know my parents so well that like, um, I know what they would want because I know their heart, you know, my, a lot of people have said that I have my dad's humor and I have my mother's heart. And, um, so, so I know them 
intimately. I know their thought process. I know what they would respond with. I know their desires, what they like and don't like. I know their heart, right? I know them, okay? Now, that's that's probably another reason why my mom made me an executor of her will and her estate and like the, the whole paperwork thing, right? Because she trusted me and my grandma, like we were the closest to her and she trusted us to do those things because we know what she would want to be done. Same thing with God, okay? When we spend time with our father, you may not know a Bible word for word. You know, you may know some scriptures and you may have been going to church for a while and you know a few worship songs and you know John three sixteen, and you know God is good and you know God and Jesus loves you, the Holy Spirit is real, all that jazz. But when it comes to doing the affairs of life, <clears throat> you know, like everyday things. The Bible doesn't tell you what kind of toothpaste to buy or what kind of school your kids go to or, you know, um, the Bible doesn't say, uh, you know, where to invest uh, your money and what kind of IRA, you know, like there's, these are things that we are free to choose and, and just ask for wisdom and the Holy Spirit will give it to you. But my point is, you know your father's heart. Get to know him and his thoughts and get to know his heart then you'll be able to release heaven wherever you are and do your father's will that's what jesus was all about jesus didn't deal with a lost parent but um he knew how it was to walk with his father and and he knew what the father wanted so so intimately and so passionately that he said, if you look at me, you've seen the father and i wouldn't do or say anything unless i see the father do it or say it like he knows the father's will and that's how we have to be it's we got to walk in the authority and the love of the father because we know that's what he would want right we would bless others and, and to make time for our kids or our family or our spouse our friends our relationships because we know that's what god wants we know the father's heart and uh, to everyone that is listening uh, I just want to reiterate, like, this is not the end of your story. It may be the end of a chapter, but you have a lot of chapters to go. The game is not over. Uh, the story has just begun. It's time to turn a new page. And I just speak life over you. I just speak joy, strength, and life over you right now. In Jesus' name, that, that when you're listening to this, and if you're going through something, I, I want you to please message me, comment, whatever, but get a hold of me and tell me that you heard this podcast. If you've dealt with a loss or, a, you know, lost a parent, a mom or dad, whatever I can, I've, I've been there. I'm in it right now. And, uh, it wouldn't hurt having someone else to talk to about it. You know, like it's okay. We're going to get through this and God is good all the time. Life sucks sometimes, man. Like, it's it's okay. Jesus promised, actually, that in this world, you will have tribulation. That Like, he guaranteed it. Like, he didn't promise you an easy life. But you know what he promised you? He promised that you will overcome. He said that in this world, you will have tribulation, but you can take heart. Because Jesus said, I have overcome. And his victory is our victory. We identify with Jesus and... And John, let's see, John 14. I'm going to pick up my Bible now. John 14, 20 says, In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Jesus is in the Father. Jesus and the Father are one. We are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us. That makes us in unison. That makes us not separated from God. You're not far from God. You're not forgotten of God. You are right in the center of his heart. You are the, the complete apple of his eye. You know, you are the center of his attention. And God is big enough to do that interpersonally. He can have a personal relationship with you face to face on every single person on this planet because he is that omnipotent. He is that omnipresent. He is that omniscient. He is a good God. And uh, 
to everyone that needs some encouragement, there is a book, a uh, chapter of Psalms, Psalms 112. I posted it on Facebook, but it was I wrote it down as 111. But it's, uh, looking back, it's a mistake. I, it's actually Psalms 112. <clears throat> and it's talking about the righteous man. And it says here in Psalms 112, verse 6, talking about the righteous man, he will never be shaken and the righteous will be remembered forever. He will not fear evil tidings or bad news. Uh, his heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And his heart is upheld. He will not fear until he looks with satisfaction upon his adversaries. That's dope. He is given freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever and his horn will be exalted in honor. Dude, you know what I think about when I read verse 8? I think of Kratos from God of God of War. Because <laughs> uh, he said his heart is upheld. He will not fear un until he looks with satisfaction upon his adversaries. I'm just thinking of Kratos like, you know, slaying some dude and like with that eat like that weird smirk of satisfaction after putting down the enemy um yeah that's how that's how we are guys like if you are a man of god that and then you are righteous if you were a believer you're made righteous actually jesus had made you his righteousness you are the righteousness of god in christ jesus and the bible and ephesians calls the church the fullest expression of god's glory and um you're dressed in his robe of righteousness. He sees you as perfect. And because you are a righteous man, I'm speaking into you right now, like because you are righteous, it is possible for you to have a steadfast heart. Even if you have uh, bad news or evil tidings, whatever you want to call it, your heart can be steadfast in the Lord. Lean unto the Lord and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God loves you, and uh, he is for you. He's not against you. He didn't kill your mom. He didn't kill your dad. That's some Old Testament BS, right? Um, God loves everyone, and he is with the brokenhearted. Um, Jesus said, come who all are weary, you know, for I will give you rest. Let Jesus give you rest. You know, his, his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Take on jesus he loves you and um, hopefully these tips uh, will give you some encouragement and uplift you if you're feeling down like i said if you lost a parent or or lost a loved one please reach out uh, we're all here together we're a fight fam uh, we're a fight family and um this is a fight y'all and you know like it's not it's not easy but it's easier when we do it together and just remember, stay away from the toxic theology that God did this to you. Stop blaming God. You don't have to find a reason for everything. I know that's very dis dissatisfying to people who are analytical and, you know, logical and want a reason for A plus B equals C. I'm sorry, but you can't have all the answers, you know. <laughs> um, we have to have come, come to some conclusion, to some peace about them. And stay away from the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, the what ifs, I should have done this, should have done that. Stay away from it. Stay away. And uh, reach out to people um, with a mentor, a, uh, a pastor, a therapist, counselor, somebody, me, whoever. Reach out. You're not alone. Um, God loves you. And so do I. And uh, thank you for listening. I know it's been a little while. But... Um, taking care of some family business and um family first you know and uh i love y'all and remember to keep fighting the good fight of faith god bless